So I'm feeling kind of bored here at the office today, you guys, and I was thinking, what's a really good way to pass some time? And then I realized we could just build another PC. And that is what we're doing today, ladies and gentlemen. We are building a gorgeous high-end gaming PC inside the white Lian Lee Dynamic O11 uh, XL ROG certified case. It's been a while since I've done a white and green build, so I think it's time. All right, let's go over some parts real quick. Starting with the CPU, we are going with the Ryzen 7 3700X, an eight core 16 thread processor, which you guys have seen me use in a million of my builds. I did want to go with one of their new 5000 series CPUs like the 5800X, but unfortunately that is in the AMD build and that is currently at my home. That's the current rig that I'm using. So we are going to be using the 3700X instead, which is still a solid gaming and you know productivity CPU for this build. It's going to be more than plenty for this entire build. I want to toss the CPU inside the Aura's X70 Aura's Extreme motherboard. If you guys remember, I tried to use the same board in the retro PC, but it was too big to fit inside the case, so I shelved it and I promised to use it in a different build. Well, I kept my promise and here we are. I'm going to be throwing this inside the, uh, the massive O11 case. Now, since we are on the X570 platform and this is mostly a Gigabyte and Aura's build, it just makes sense going with their M.2 SSD. What the hell is that noise? That does not sound good. I'll definitely investigate the noise as I uh, get closer to installing the SSD. But we're going to be using a 2TB NVMe Gen 4 SSD. That way we can take advantage of PCI Gen 4 speeds from the X570 motherboard. Now, for the RAM, we're going to be using some sticks I've actually never used before, but I heard really great things about it. Um, these are the Tough RAM RGB from Thermaltake. We're going to be putting in two 16 gigabyte kits, so a total of 32 gigs at 3200 megahertz with a seal timing of 16. So pretty fast, good looking white RGB sticks for the build. Moving on to the Gravis card, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the Gigabyte Vision RTX 3080, one of the very few white 30 series cards in existence. I know that Zotac came out with one recently and even Asus launched their white Strix version, which by the way I'm getting and it's gonna go in the Helios build, it's gonna look amazing, make sure you subscribe for that. But I'm super, super excited to be using this card. I think it's gonna look immaculate inside the white Lee and Lee case. Oh, just thinking about it gets me excited. Let's move on <laughs> to the rest of the parts real quick. The MVP of this build actually is gonna be the cooler. This is EK's new big boy, the AIO Elite 360D RGB. This is actually the first time I'm seeing an all-in-one cooler come with six fans for a push and pull configuration, you guys. The Elite comes with six of their Vardar RGB static pressure fans, which on paper seems like it's gonna be absolutely insane for cooling. So I'm definitely gonna be testing out the, uh, the performance on that and see how cool it's gonna keep the 3700X. Of course, we're gonna be throwing in some extra fans for cooling. After all, we do have a lot of extra space to work with, so why not take advantage of that? I couldn't get my hands on the white uni fans, unfortunately, because they're sold out everywhere. So Lee and Lee sent over some of their previous generation fans instead. Um, I mean, I do have some black uni fans, but it just doesn't make sense with this color scheme since it's mostly white and green. And I think these will look a lot better compared to the black uni fans. And we're gonna be throwing in a lot of fans, you guys. A total of 13. We got three fans in the bottom, three on the side as intake, and then we got seven fans for exhaust. Six on the top for push and pull, and then one more exhaust in the back. So yeah, total of 12 fans, which is gonna be absolutely ridiculous. And powering the build is the Corsair RM850X fully modular gold certified power supply. I was gonna use the Gigabyte 850 watt power supply instead, but unfortunately, cable mod doesn't make custom cables for that specific model, so I decided to opt for this instead. Plus it's in white, you know, matches the color scheme anyways. And finally, we are building inside the super popular Lee & Lee O11 Dynamic XL case in white. This has some pretty cool features compared to their non-XL version, which I'll talk about as we progress through the build. But yeah, guys, these are pretty much all the parts I'll be using. The color scheme will be white and green with some black accents because we do have black accents around the case, which I don't want to mod. This build is going to be going to a special person and I can't tell you who it is or when that's gonna happen. You guys are gonna have to find that in a few weeks after this video goes live. But any whoosies, these are the parts. Let's start building. All right, let's start with the big boy motherboard. Aura's Extreme. Team up, fight on, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. 
<laughs> this is, I do not recommend this at all. Oh my God. How did that even work? Look how insane this board looks, you guys. Almost every square inch of this motherboard is covered by this super heavy and thick armor on the bottom. You don't even have access to the ports on the bottom. So in order to plug cables in, they provide you with these extension cables. So for example, this one here is the, uh, the front panel connector. So you basically plug in the extension cable from the side and then plug in the cables on this end. Whoever designed this motherboard definitely put aesthetics first. I mean, it's, it's such a clean looking board. And I'm gonna be using my new electric screwdriver I picked up recently. I featured this exact set in my Cooltech Under 50. So if you guys missed that video, definitely check it out. This thing comes in super handy for PC builds. So as you guys can see, the tip is not magnetic. It is not holding on to the screw. So what I'm gonna do is rub the tip on the magnetized section and now it becomes magnetic. Look at that. All right, let's see what's going on with the uh, M.2 SSD. Looks like it's in good shape. So what was that uh, noise coming from? Oh, they're just loose screws, okay. So before I install the M.2 SSD in here, you guys will notice that it is missing something. It does not have the standoff pre-installed. So I went to look inside the motherboard box and grab the standoff and the screw which is needed to install the SSD. All right, and now we can insert the M.2 SSD and screw it in place. Always make sure to peel off the sheet from the thermal pads before putting it back on your SSD. All right, M.2 officially installed. We can go ahead and pop in the CPU next. The triangle on the socket is over here in this corner, so we're gonna match that with the, uh, the gold triangle from the CPU. Gently lower it in place, lock the lever, and we are done. We are installing the aftermarket cooler, so we're not gonna need any of these brackets. So before I pop in the RAM sticks, I wanna make sure I can easily install the uh, CPU cooler bracket without any interference. So that is the next step. Oh man, these are a lot of fans. All right, next we're gonna be using four of these screws with the default bracket that came with the motherboard. Since this is an AM4 socket, we don't need to install a new backplate. All right, so all the screws are in. All right, the AM4 mounting bracket's officially installed, but let's go ahead and put the radiator to the side and install the RAM next. Oh man, these look so good. I actually had no idea it had chrome accents on there as well. I thought that part was supposed to be gray, but this actually looks a lot better. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> Definitely an odd shape for uh, memory sticks, but once those are lit up, it's gonna look so damn sick. We are ready to gently lower the board inside the case. Oh my God, so much space. Look at all that room for activities, you guys. That was so easy. All right, here's what the build looks like so far. I've decided to mount the uh, AIO on the top. It just won't look as good towards the side. Plus we're using it as a push and pull configuration for exhaust, so it just makes more sense on the top and then we can install six fans for intake on the bottom and on the side. But before we install the uh, the cooler, I do want to kind of plug in the cables near the top because 
it's gonna be kind of hard to get to them once the EIO is installed. One of the things I love about this motherboard so much is that all the connectors are on the edge of the board, making it so convenient for cable management. And I can just literally route it straight from here and into the cable grommet. We got the USB 3 headers on the bottom, USB 2 headers, all the SATA ports, even a 24 pin is here along with the uh, fan header is near the top. I also just noticed that the power and reset button of the board is right on the armor piece itself, which is pretty cool. I do want to use this cutout over here in the corner to route both of the 8 pin EPS cables, but unfortunately the, uh, the hard drive cage is taking up about half of that. And since we're not going to use any hard drives for this build, I think it's better to just remove both of them. All right, let's plug in these beauties. All right, cables are plugged in, so let's go ahead and move on to the AIO installation. We're gonna have to hook up all six of these static pressure fans to the radiator. All right, so this is the bottom of the radiator, and since we're gonna be using this as exhaust, we're gonna have to position the cables towards the radiator like this. All right, so the easy part is done. Now comes the hard part, holding up the entire radiator while screwing in three fans from the top. All right, AIO is finally installed. This was hands down the most difficult AIO to install in this case. I'm surprised that the Lian Li XL case didn't have as much clearance as I expected for this push and pull configuration. <sighs> I had to put so much pressure from this side in order to align the holes to screw in from the top. I don't know if you guys can see this, but this fan over here is pushing up against those two cables. There's literally no space between this fan and the cables over here. Like I wouldn't be surprised if these cables are broken because of how much pressure I had to apply in order to align this radiator with the top mounting bracket. You can kind of get a better angle from the top over here. You can see just how close the radiator is to those two cables. Here's a quick tip for anyone that wants to use the same AIO in their build. Make sure you're going with a big boy case. Clearly the Lian Lee Dynamic XL wasn't big enough because I barely, barely made it fit. You need to have enough clearance, like a lot of clearance, from the top of your motherboard to the top of the case. And if you're mounting this in the front, you have the same amount of clearance as well. So yeah, that's definitely something to consider if you're planning on picking this up. Here's a quick cable management trick if you guys want to hide these nasty cables coming out of your uh, AIO pump. If you can, try and wrap the cable underneath the mounting bracket. So this is the CPU fan cable coming out of the pump. As you can see, I routed it underneath the mounting bracket from the left side and out the right. So I'm just gonna pull on this cable. And then I can run it straight up and behind the case. Now I'm gonna do the same to the RGB cable. So as you can see, I routed both of the cables underneath the bracket, across the board, and towards the top behind the case. It definitely looks a lot cleaner this way. All right, now it's time to install the rest of the fans inside the case. So we're gonna be doing 
three on the bottom, three on the side as intake, so a total of six, and then one more exhaust for the back. All right, so to install the fans on this side of the case, I'm gonna go in and remove these covers, which are also used to install SSDs and hard drives. But since I'm not installing any SSDs or hard drives in this case, I can just completely remove them. All right, so since these fans are gonna be used as intake, I'm gonna have to face them the other way, which means that the cables are gonna be visible. But look what I found, ladies and gentlemen, some aluminum fan covers that I had sitting in my storage for years. I'm gonna use these to kind of cover up some parts of the cable. This looks actually way better with the aluminum covers. What do you guys think? So luckily I have eight of these, and that's gonna be plenty for the three fans here and then the other three fans on the side. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here is what the build is looking like so far. Man, that is looking clean. I decided to add a, uh, an aluminum cover for the exhaust fan as well, just so there's a bit of consistency across all the white fans. You can still kind of um, see the cable with the intake fans, but with the cover, it does look a lot better than before. Unfortunately, there is a noticeable color difference between the Lee and Lee case and the fans with the aluminum cover. Uh, I don't know why Lee and Lee is using a different shade of white compared to their fans, but you know, it is what it is. This is more of like a snow white, whereas the aluminum cover and the, the case is more of like a pure white. But hopefully it's not gonna be too noticeable once the system is powered on with all the, with all the lighting. Also, I know there are gonna be some people in the comment section saying, Ed, why didn't you just mount the AIO on the side if it was giving you so many problems? Well, look how thick the radiator with the uh, fans are. Imagine this thickness over here on the side of this case. It simply won't work because the 24 pin cable and both of the uh, USB 3 header cables will come in contact with the AIO. This will extend out way too much and it just, it won't work with the case unfortunately. So that is my only option. Here's what the cable management looks like in the back. It is gonna be an absolute nightmare <laughs> to manage all, all these wires. But the good thing is I did remove both the hard drive cages so there's gonna be plenty of space for that. And also the uh, EK AIO comes with this fan hub. So I can plug in all six of their fans into this, which I can also plug directly into the motherboard, which is gonna save me a ton of time. And I think I just sold something on offer up. All right, last thing we need to install is the Vision RTX 3080 by Gigabyte. Let's check out this bad boy. Oh, <laughs> okay. Oh man, look at this card. She is looking beautiful. Gigabyte, you guys have outdone yourselves indeed. I wish I could mount this vertically. It will look so much better in the build, but unfortunately I don't have any vertical mounts, so this is gonna go in horizontally. Still, it's gonna look amazing. I'm not a huge fan of this purple accent strip over here, but I don't think it'll be too noticeable once everything's on. Here we go, moment of truth. Ooh, I love that click. <laughs> oh man, such a good looking card. This bottom HD audio cable is bothering me. I don't like how it's just slanting down here. So I'm gonna use this cable clip to kind of stick the cable underneath the motherboard like this. Much better.
Build is finally done. Shall we boot it up? Ah, every time, I swear. All right, one more time. Oh, ho, ho. that is looking sick. All the RGB lights are synced together. Oh, even with the EK fans. What? I did not expect that. That's actually pretty cool. There she is, ladies and gentlemen. Looking so pretty with all those RGB lights. I can stare at this all day, honestly. It just looks that good. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and install windows on here, load up RGB Fusion so I can change the lighting of the fans and also run a few benchmarks, maybe even play some Cyberpunk to see how well the EK AIO performs. I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, so here we are on the desktop. I went in and put back the uh, side panel. Let's take a quick look at the uh, temps on idle before I start running benchmarks on here. All right, so on idle, we are looking at around 45 degrees C for the 3700X, which is really good. Sometimes it peaks around 55 degrees with a max temperature of 60.5 on idle. So we're gonna go to run a benchmark real quick for about 30 minutes or so, and we'll come back and see what the max temperature is on the CPU. So here we are about 30 minutes later, running the Heaven benchmark in a constant loop. You can definitely hear the fan noise from the system, which is to be expected. I mean, we have 13 fans <laughs> inside here. So uh, let's go ahead and pause the benchmark real quick and take a look at the temps. All right, so CPU, wow. What? CPU max temperature? 66 degrees, are you seeing that? That is actually pretty damn impressive. That is a first for me, you guys. I've never seen this CPU get that cool on a uh, non-water cool loop. I was expecting around maybe 75, low 70s, but 66 is definitely, wow, I'm impressed. Let's take a look at the GPU temps real quick. We got the RTX 3080 peaking at 63 degrees Celsius as well. So very cool temps overall from both the CPU and GPU. I mean, there's the airflow in this case is just absolutely nuts. We got six fans just for intake and then seven fans for exhaust. So I wasn't expecting anything less. All right, let's change the colors of the system real quick. I told you guys earlier, this is gonna be a white and green build with black accents. As much as I like the, uh, the RGB rainbow effect, unfortunately, we're gonna have to say goodbye to that. And since I have all the fans hooked up to the motherboard, I can literally just change the color with a click of a button. So let's say if I wanna do static, let's do uh, red for example. Everything becomes red. We can do yellow, we can do teal, we can do blue or purple. And then of course we got green as well, which I think looks the best. Oh, I almost forgot. Here's white, which also looks really good. I would say actually white looks the best and then uh, green colors. All right, so I loaded up Cyberpunk just so I can test the uh, Vision RTX 3080 and see how many frames we can get in high settings. This is running 1440p and we're getting a little over 100 FPS. High settings. This is a very demanding tile, so obviously, you know, it's, it's to be expected. All right, I'm gonna get on my bike real quick. I'm pretty sure this is where the frames are gonna dip. Yep, we're already under 100. As I'm driving through the city, we're getting in the 80s, low 90s. This is high settings, by the way, 1440p, so definitely playable. I feel like for Cyberpunk, it's definitely a game where you have to play in high resolution to really appreciate the attention to detail and the beauty of the game. Just out of curiosity, I wanna see what, uh, what it looks like in 4K. Can the 3080 handle it? Let's take a look. Ooh, under 60 FPS on high settings. This is not even ultra or maxed out. But I do have to say, the game looks so much better. Wow. Of course, with Shadow Play On, we are definitely taking a much bigger hit. We're getting less than 50 FPS, which is ridiculous. But look how beautiful this game looks. That is insane. 
And that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, consider dropping a like before you head out as it does help out the channel a ton. I do have a lot more PC builds coming right up, you guys. And the best way to not miss those videos is to make sure you have notifications enabled. YouTube, for some reason, doesn't push my videos out to everyone. So there's a good chance you might miss it. Uh, I'll drop a link to all the parts I use down below, assuming you can even get any of them in stock. I know it's been crazy. This whole year has been crazy, actually. But um, I have a very special video planned with this PC. Make sure you guys stick around for that. You definitely don't want to miss it. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I love your beautiful faces, and I'll see you very soon in the next one.